Okay, okay, then uh, <clears throat> I think I've already been introduced, so I don't have to go uh, through all that. But I'd like to welcome all the participants. And um, just on an introductory level, uh, the reason why uh, we decided to go through this coaching diary, uh, because uh, remember what came out in the last, uh, uh, the last session that was taken by Bosco was the yeah. fact that, that uh, people look at this coaching diary as probably what limits their progress to get into level two. So we are actually going to demystify this and take you through each and every page of that diary. And we'll go page by page. And if you have any questions, you can be able to raise them at that particular time so that we finish off with the page and the questions and everything. I will take the first bit, which is more or less just a bit of administrative. And then uh, when we come to the four templates, which are the technical bit of this diary, uh, Paul Odera will actually take over from me. And the reason why I want Paul to do the templates is because he is currently coaching uh, the Simbas, so he can be able to relate whatever is there on the template to what he actually does. And then Paul also happens to be very good at documentation. That is one of his biggest strengths. So Paul will lead us through the templates. Uh, with it's, me hoped, supporting. it's hoped that I'm actually coaching well. That's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Paul. Uh, that is one of your biggest strengths. That I know. Right? And you're able to take us through very well. Okay, then. Uh, Malik, you will uh, present this on the, on the screen. Eh? Are we ready? Yes, we are. Okay, guys, a bit more. Can you enlarge a bit? Okay, that is the first page. Naturally, that is the page where you put your name. I think there's a slot for the name there. Malik, if you just go up. So without doubt, we need that. Yeah, yeah, that's just the coach's name. And that is important, all right? Because you must have your name on your diary. Let's move on. Table of contents, again, I don't really need to go through that. So we move on. Okay, guys. Now, on this page, there are actually three things that I want to bring out very clearly. If you look at the second paragraph, the last sentence there states that, please note, that you must cover a minimum of six matches and a minimum of six training sessions. Now, your matches can be twice a week. I think that is possible. Having matches thrice a week could be a bit too much, but I believe that is also possible. So it all depends. But if you are taking your diary and you are coaching a club, then I believe the only realistic aspect is having one match in a week, right? Maybe if you can slot in a friendly midweek, that is fine. But the point is that you must, your diary must cover a minimum of six matches and a minimum of six training sessions. Whether you're going to have a training, one training session in a week, or whether you're going to have two training sessions, in a week or even three training sessions in a week. The second point that I want to bring out there is actually the reason why we are going through this diary. If you look at the top right hand on your top, second column top, there is a big note there that this diary is not intended to be a punishment. We are looking at bringing out your ideas, to generate your ideas, you write them down, and then that is going to help the educator or the trainer 
help you go through your diary. Gentlemen and lady, ladies, if we have ladies, it is not punitive. Take note of that comment there. Your diary is not intended to be a document that highlights your mistakes, nor is it intended to be an exam, right? It is just a document that is helping us put your very good ideas on paper, and then that can enable you to make references, either going forward or after you finish your season, you can be able to go back to the diary and reflect. And then the third aspect there, which again is very important, especially when you're doing your season plan, because it is important to get your diary from a season plan. So for me, the first thing, we, you must get your season plan first, and then you will now be able to extract whatever you want from your season plan and put it into the diary. So if you look at the bottom right there, you are being guided, then you are developing players. You are looking at the technical aspects. You are looking at the tactical aspects. You are looking at the physical aspects, which they describe there as fits. Fourth one there is social, but I would like to add a fifth one, which is also the mental aspects of the game. So when you are doing your development or your whole season plan, it's important that you look at all those aspects of training. Now, do we have any questions on what I've mentioned on that page? Silence means we move on. So Malik, we go to the next page. I think this is where it's also very important that you record contact details of relevant people from either your rugby club or your rugby school or whichever, wherever you're operating from. But I believe it's either a club or a school, right? It is important to have the details of the people, the relevant around you. You are talking about your chairman, secretary, treasurer, team manager. If it's a school, probably your principal or your, or your games master, if you are operating under a game master, anybody who is relevant. So that you are not calling all the time to ask people, do you know this guy's number? You have this guy's number. So, so, so those contact details are also very important. For players, me, I always also recommend that you add a, a, a place there like know where they stay. For me, I think that is also very, very important. All right? Also to record where exactly the players stay. All right, we move on. I don't think there could be any questions there. The next one is actually all of the contact, but now we are talking of players, right? Yeah, and it is very, very important that you have a contact of each and every player uh, who is in your club, in your school. And this is where I was saying it's important that you record also where they stay. We move on. That is a very, very important, uh, for me, that is a very important uh, page where you record the attendance. And I think while well, I have given you a code, where they are guiding you and saying, all you need to do is A for justified absence. I believe justified absence is when probably somebody is away with permission. And justified absence is missing training with permission. That is an X. I is injured and P is present. For me, that is a must. It is important that you fill that page because I believe all when you are doing your selection, right? That is a very, very important guideline, a guideline for team section. Any questions or comments there? We move on, Malik. Now, I think the rest, like here, you look at this page. This is more or less purely maybe administration and more or less uh, for you to coordinate with the manager on all this. So I'm not going to really take a lot of time on this, 
because these are things that you can fix, all right? But it's all telling you about the administration, you know, during training. So, a lot of these are things that you'll be discussing with your team manager. So, let's not take a lot of time because you can read them, but just bring out one important aspect there of player welfare. Eh? That is very, very important. So, that area that you need to look at very, very carefully and in detail. We move on, Malik. Again, a lot of administration there. So I'm not going to take a lot of time there. We can read that. The next page. The only area I want to bring to attention here is if you look at the bottom left there, eh? that is also very, very important. You find a lot of coaches don't, don't, don't extrapolate. Eh? You take the time of the kickoff and you bring it right down into what time are you exactly going to tell your players to arrive at venue. So for me, I believe that is a very, very important guide also, so that if a game is kicking at 3 p.m., then you ought to tell your players to arrive at 1.30 p.m. And that is how now you are going to arrange the program pre-game. So for me, that is a very important thing for coaches, and you ought to look at it very, very critically. So we move on. Management, uh, touchline management, during the game management, after the game, immediately after the game management. Again, a lot of information that WALGIB is providing for you. So again, there are things that you can read, mainly administration. Next page. More or less the same. We are now talking about management players, facilities, communications. Again, those are aspects that you can read. And mainly team management chest. And then, of course, after the season and all that. Right? So those are things that I can actually read. And I would now like us to move straight away into the technical mess where we are coming now into template number one. Now, this is where I want you guys to really ask questions because I believe this is where maybe some people have issues, right? So I'd now like to hand over to Paul, and then uh, Paul will take us through right from the training session templates. So Paul, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, now. Those who attended the session with Bosco and I think it was Perez, was it last week, Malik? The week before. My, my days, my days have merged, have merged into one. <laughs> so yes, it was. They spoke about the transcript. So what I want us to achieve here are two things. One, for you to be able to complete these templates in your own style. The second thing I want you to do is to uh, start developing a recognition of how the transcript and this diary are related. Okay, so the first template is on planning. Malik, if, if you just show that, that template, um, the first template is, is on a session plan. Okay, the, just, just we go straight into the next page. Because okay, that, no, 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 yeah, that one. Okay, so this is the session plan. Now, World Rugby's concept on coaching is based on three things how you plan, how you do it, and how you review it. And that's how this template is organized in terms of your plan, how you do your session, and then how you review it and have feedback. So at this point, I want to, Aunt Malik then to share with us the part of the transcript that uh, the educator will be looking at when they are dealing with this part of your diary, which is your planning, doing, and reviewing. So Malik, if you just take us to the transcript, to that section, and then we're going to come back here. Okay, let me, let me find it. 
Now, as Malik is looking for it, coaches, I want you to have some questions. What challenges would you find between that template and the bit of the transcript? Because if some of you have attempted the level two and have had an NYC in any area, okay? Um, if it's to do with this template in this section, this is the time to post these questions so that um, Tank and I uh, can actually give you some feedback on what it is between that transcript and that particular template um, that you need to do to bridge um, that gap. So if there are any you, questions or any queries or any challenges you found with this template and, and the part of um, the, the transcript. Malik, you've got the transcript? Not yet, not yet. I have, I have mine here. Do I just share it? Yeah, yeah, please do. Do Paul? I have sharing, right? Paul Odera. Can, make... can you hear yeah. me, Paul? I can hear you. Who's that? Paul, there is a question for you on the chat. Eh? There's a question for me in the chat. Must the session plan be a skeleton or to detail? Because I find the space a bit small. Thank you very much, Simon. That is an excellent question. And if you have big handwriting like the ones who are taught, Right from standard one, you filled it after one bullet point. Very valid point. Um, and those who are lucky enough to be, to have computers, et cetera, and laptops and can squeeze in, uh, insert text box or play around with the font, very lucky. So, uh, let me just share. Okay, now. So this is what Bosco and Paris covered last week. Now, the template one on planning, this is what your educator looks for. Um, how you've prepared your session plan. So I'm going to go back to Odongo's question in, in a few minutes. So you have appropriate content, facilities, equipment, and timing relative to the abilities, et cetera. You've prepared a series of coaching sessions, and then your delivery, how you introduce it. Um, the activity of the players, uh, how you observe the players, um, and how you provide positive correction uh, when the players are engaged in it, and then give an opportunity, and then you deliver an allocated time, okay, and then your summary. So from your plan, sorry, um, to your communication, and then to your technical and tactical knowledge of the practice. So this is the goal of you passing the level two, getting licenses at level two, your session, when your educator comes to observe you in your place. And you can see the World Rugby have dedicated a lot of time to all the points. Okay, so I just wanted us to touch quickly on the transcript, then get back to the template. Malik. Template one that that you had that you had open. Now, is this the one? Simon. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Someone you've asked if it should be a skeleton or detail, because this space is too small for you to write everything. Simon, can you put, can I ask you something? Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me, Simon? Yes, I can. Now, tell me, what are the important things for you to remember when you are going in for a session? What are the things you uh, do as a practitioner, as a coach? Um, of course, you plan the session. So what are the then things you do in your planning? Um, uh, straight from um, the introduction of uh, all the skills that's going to be taught for the day um, to from the uh, individual uh, skills to the mini units and units uh, hold together up, with up. the template. Yeah, you, you've gone deep into technical. Now, do you don't, don't worry. Imagine people are not listening to you. It's just you and I talking over a cup of coffee. Now, okay. you're going for a session, isn't it? Yeah. What are some of the things that concern you? Is it the pitch? 
Is it is yeah. it whether there will be light or is it whether there will be a ball or two balls or? Yeah, yeah, the equipment and everything. So equipment that, that is has one, to be. It? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So equipment, equipment is an area that you think about in your planning. Yes, definitely. How many players do you normally have at a session? Uh, uh, twenty to twenty-five. And how many balls do you have? Uh, six to eight. So you have six to eight balls and about twenty. Okay. And yeah. I guess those six to eight balls are not all excellent quality. Yeah, you get like two are not uh, much, much. I uh, can't play a match. And then there's some that are used for the match. So those ones that the chairman keeps and hides. <laughs> so that, so that it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. yeah, yeah. So in your planning, Simon, if yeah, if you can put that in your planning, look, I have 20 players. I'll have six to eight balls, of which two or three balls will not be very good. And this, so you can write that six balls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twenty players. Does that take a lot yeah. of space? No, no, no. Okay. So that's part of your equipment, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now. What do you like coaching? Uh, basically, the individual skills. What um, do you like coaching? Handling. Do you like coaching tackles or do you like coaching passes? Handling. Do you like side steps? The, pass, the, pa the passing is uh, actually my favorite. So passing is your favorite, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So g give, me, give me a session, a passing yeah. session that you're planning for your team. You have 20, 25 players with six balls. And yeah. then if you look at this template, yeah. okay, what mm. what would you what would you want to put in? Because you're saying that space the times is too small for you and you want to write many things, isn't it? Yeah, at times even you want to draw the session on your on your space. You even want to draw the session, okay? Yeah, at times because at times you forget because at times you come in and uh, somebody does one mistake and again you okay you're off track. Let, let, let's go to work with your passing session. So yeah, let's look at the left side. Yeah. What are you going to do? Okay. Um, I'm going to first of all set up the station, so mm -hmm. mark it out uh, with the cons. That's why at times I like drawing. So right. after, yeah, after I've, I've marked it down, I'll write down the uh, description of the uh, key points that I'm looking for yeah. or yeah. that we need to work let, on. Let me let me take you through this slowly so that you don't forget. So now yeah. content. The content yeah. asks you. Simon, what are you going to do? Yeah. So uh, in, in this one, um, you'll get there. So the players, you will get them into a huddle, talk to them first. Yeah. Yeah. And then warm them up. Yeah. And then? Then, uh, um, so that's basically briefing, warming up, mm -hmm. then... Uh, yeah. We go, we go down to the um, individual skills. So, so you'll brief them? Yeah. And the warm-up, is the warm-up part of the passing drill? Uh, yeah, warm-up is part okay. of the passing drill. Warm-up, part of the passing yeah. drill, then yeah. the main part of your drill? Yeah, then the main part of the drill is going to be, of course, uh, um, the the... The now, unit, can so, we reduce what you're going to do to three bullet points? Okay, so basically, so we just decide that on that particular day, I'm just doing passing. It, it's okay. There's no problem. Because remember, yeah. this is a template that you're going to put forward for your educator yeah. to come and watch you and judge your competence in all those areas that are on the transcript. So you'll say, today you've just chosen passing or today you've chosen passing and sidestep, etc. Well, I'll take you through your favorite bit so that you can yeah. talk about it a bit easier. What I'd yeah. recommend is have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay. To what you're going to do, isn't it? Okay, yeah. How many bullet points will that need? That's three bullet points. Do you need a lot of space for that? No, no, not really. Yeah. So I mean, I'm yeah. just trying to help you tighten it, isn't it? Let's yeah. go to organization. Yeah. You say you like drawing. Yeah, very much. Okay, is that enough space? What's the drill that you want, want to have for passing? Uh, we can do pass and follow. So you can do a pass and follow. How many, uh, they do it in, it's a grid of four by what? Four, uh, four by, I normally use four by four. So four by four, so four, four cones across and yeah. four cones 
uh, in, in a linear direction. Yeah, just, over, just, over to mark, just to mark as uh, uh, four cones across, yeah. then four cones ahead just to mark where the defender is supposed to be so that the players run straight. How many meters between each cone? Uh, I normally like it, uh, three. So three meters. So that's yeah. three, three, three. That's nine. Mm. So it's about 10 by 10 by 10, yeah. 10 by 15. Yeah, 10 by 15. But is that space enough for you to draw a 10 by 15 grid? Yeah, more than enough. Your educator will be happy. That's done. <laughs> okay. That's done. Yeah. Because you've showed your organization, this is what you're going to do. This is where you have the cones and they'll yeah. be clear. So um, anyway, that's uh, uh, another point I want to raise, but we'll talk about it in a bit. Let's go to coaching. Yeah. This asks you, what are the key factors? Yeah. Now, this, this is one of the hard, not the hardest. This is key for you to show that as a coach, you're actually aware of, of what is required in, in, terms of, um, in terms of coaching. So passing is your favorite and you're doing yeah. pass and follow. Yeah. What are the key factors of passing? Yeah. Uh, key factors of passing, um, first of all, is uh, catching the ball in, in two hands. Yes. Yeah, so then, then, there's, uh, then there's what you do with your fingers, then there's what you do with your wrist, then there's what yeah. you do with your elbow, then there's what to do yeah. with the swing and the follow through, etc. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it possible to cover all those key factors at yeah. every session? All those key factors. If I'm doing passing, this is more than enough space. No, no, no. Listen, listen to the question. Yeah. What I'm asking is. Yeah. There are about six, the sequential lot of key factors. There are quite a number, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. So how many would you like to cover for this particular session that you're planning? I normally like to shorten it down to three. Perfect. So yeah. your educator, when your educator comes to watch you at a session, yeah. first it's, it'll be that the Simon recognized that these are key factors and you've written them down. Yeah. And then you've listed those three key factors. Let's say you've talked about catching and fingers uh, spread and yeah. wrist being cocked. Yeah, and it? wrist. Yeah. Okay. Now, the key here, the goal is when a player doesn't cock their wrist, mm -hmm. how does the pass look? And then how does the pass look when a player cocks their wrist? Yeah. You see, because so, if you looked at the transcript, yeah, sorry, yeah. finish, someone, tell me. Yeah. Tell me. So, um, one, the pass is not going to be accurate. Okay. Yeah. And um, what, uh, when, the, uh, when the player does, uh, does not, uh, when the player cocks his wrist, mm -hmm. yeah, the pass is not going to be accurate. When the player does not cock. Yeah. yeah so, we, you're doing really well because yeah. you're saying, look, when the wrist is cocked, mm. the, the flight of the ball is different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So now, in, in, your, in your key factors, that's what you're going to be looking at for that particular session, isn't it? Yeah. Now, when we look at remarks and feedback, mm -hmm. ca can that be a good way to give feedback to the players? Ah, yeah. Yeah, that can be a very perfect thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, mm. look, your, mm. the, the, the passes are flighted today because your wrists are, um, are not being cocked. Or, yes, well done, Andrew. You cocked your wrist. Good. Um, Peter, uh, well, why did that pass not go that way if we think of our wrist? And then the players will talk to you, isn't it? Yeah. Now, that is mm. the gold of this template. Yeah. So between your organize, between your your content, your organization, your coaching, and then your feedback. Because remember, the 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 loop is plan, yeah. Do and then you review. Yeah, review. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 that's the loop, and then in the okay. review, it informs your planning again for the next session. Yeah. True. Okay, Simon. Very, yeah. very, thank you very much. Uh, you know, you, you without you now, I'd have just been yakking. <laughs> Thanks a lot as well. Brilliant. So, yeah. okay, all participants in Simon. So, so that is this template, and and 
the planning does you don't have to write you know two three four paragraphs no the key is is are you able to show an order between what you're doing how you've organized it um the key factors and can you see it and then in the feedback and then can you get that loop going through Mali, can we go to the next template unless there are any questions are there any further questions here yeah maybe polo can i just add yes to Yes, yes. Uh, um, I just wanted to re-emphasize on the fact that um, <coughs> this space, this space was not put in that way uh, by mistake. You know, there are people who, if you give them two pages of space, then you are going to have a story instead of coaching. So the idea is summarize whatever you are going to do with the boys and put it on that paper. What is very important in coaching is the third column key factors because that is where coaching comes in that is where you correct and that is where you get a skill to be performed correctly all right so the whole idea is a summary not to give a long story again my advice to coaches is that if you are going to do a session on a particular day please do your research and background work even a day or two earlier. Don't wait until half an hour before you go to the pitch, and then you are now trying to sort out this issue of a session plan. Do the main work before, and then when you go into the pitch, you are merely looking at your summary of notes to remind you of what you're going to do. Right, so apart from that, if we have any questions, we can take the questions now instead of coming later. Thank you. Or you can put it on the chat, and we'll always see if we can come back. Malik, next next template. Game analysis. Okay, here we go. Papa, Papa, are you there? Papa, you're my guinea pig. Where is Papa? Dominic has run off. Uh, I'm here, I'm here. What's happening? Perhaps, uh, just go to the next page, Malik. Yeah. Perhaps it goes without saying that Scrummaging is your favorite. <laughs> You're making me happy even just talking. <laughs> Immediately. Immediately. Now, tell me which principle, where does scrummaging fall under these principles, uh, under these ones in attack? Gaining, going forward, support, continuity, rock small? Um, that's, a, that's the best thing about uh, 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 Scrum because it, it applies to everything. Okay, shall we say it's when you're gaining Again, possession? possession huh? Okay, now, Papa, remember if you go up to the top, Malik, just take us back to the first page where there's Wayne Smith's picture here. Now, this one is looking at the fact that key factor analysis and functional role analysis. Yes. So if we look at what is the function of a prop, Malik, uh, page 16. Yes. So the, the prop has, a, has work to do, isn't it? Yeah, a lot, yes. Okay, so that stability that he offers, maybe the tight end or the loose end. Mm -hmm. So now, once we know that that's the work of a prop, that stability, or the transfer of pressure, how would we then tie in the key factors? So how do you know when a prop is not doing his job properly, when you look? Okay. Um... So, uh, like now in the um, in in terms of gaining possession, uh, yeah, at the it's scrum. a scrum. It's a scrum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. possession at the scrum. Yes, because there's also gaining possession in the lineout, gaining possession everywhere. So scrum, gaining scrum possession down. in the scrum. Um, the, the the you know you you do from the toes to the head. Yes, uh, all the all the all the all the key factors for 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 the for the stance, for the knees, for the hips, for the back, etc. Uh, the body position. Uh, um, so if you look at a prop, how, how do you say that prop is not scrummaging well? Um, is it, what, what happens to, what, what's, when a prop's back, when is a prop scrummaging well in terms of back position? That's what I want to ask. Is it bent or is it straight? It's straight. So when a, a front row's back is straight, you would be happy with that, isn't it? 
Yes. So if your props are constantly with a curved bit, you know, yes, you, yes. I know yes. the technical Hunch. terms. Hunch, yes. Would you put that, you'd put that as a weakness, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So, so that's, you, you'd know that as one, one of your weaknesses. Yeah, one of your weaknesses. But uh, you also yes. go, um, you go backwards now so, uh, to, towards uh, what is it that is making him uh, hunch? Is it his Good. stance, his feet? Is it his hips that are not um, in a duck's tail? Is it, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, so, so many things that, that goes into that hunching? Exactly. So you're taking the key factors yes. to relate to the function of, of that particular person. Exactly, yes. Okay. Or, 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 or that particular area of the game. And then when your educator comes to have a look at you with this template, You've mm -hmm. got to be able to show your educator and yes. just how Papa has described it, that mm -hmm. our scrum is a weak area for us and you've recognized it's a weak area and these are some of the factors that lead you to, to lead to that being an area of weakness uh, in attack. Yes. Um, in going forward, so th thanks Papa. Um, no problem. Yeah. Moto. Moto, Moto is one of my favorite guys. Moto, are you there? Moto, Moto, you know, he holds KU like Atlas. You know Atlas, who carries that? Moto. <laughs> That's not a problem. Um, do we have our brother from, is it Botswana? Z? Sir, Z. Hello. Shark, my man, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I just want to, don't, don't worry about it, going forward. Yep. The most obvious, part of rugby of going forward, of course, is the person who has the ball, isn't it? Yes, sir. Tell me, the team you're coaching now, what, what area of strength do you see with, with your ball carries? I think the ball carriers are able to identify the gap, so they're able to get into that gap a bit quicker. So an area of strength for your team is the identification of the seam, the space, the, the gap? Yes. How about on impact? Is that an area of strength or weakness? Are, are they able to win that meter, get over the gain line? Yes, they're able to get over the gain line because they're running into the right gap at the right time. So that's also, so an area of strength for you is that they're on impact, they're able to go over the gain line? Yes. Okay, what are the key factors then of the ball carrier getting over the gain line? So you said one is to avoid contact, which is getting into the gap, isn't it? Yes. Okay. How about when now they do encounter resistance with the tackler? What, what, are, you, what are your guys doing well? I think what, what they do is they're, they're able to pass and follow so that when the player carrying the ball is unable to get in the gap, there's someone right behind him to assist him, whether it goes down to rock or he's standing up on his feet to secure the ball off him for the more. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so so now you, you've gone into support and you've gone into continuity. Hey, Malik, what's yeah. happened? Hiya. Malik. Oh, okay. Has Malik's power gone or something? <laughs> in, in Kenya, Kenya power and I'm darkness, back, anything. Back. Anything can happen. Is he have no fear? These African problems are the same. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back, Malik. Thank you, Z. Anyway, yeah. so um, that was the and Papa taking us through gaining possession, going forward, support, continuity, rocks and molds. The key here is what role do you play? That's functional roles. And then can you identify the key factors that help you fulfill on that function? So Papa mentioned the hinging, etc. Uh, back position to help a prop 
And then uh, Z has just talked about uh, that the ball carrier is able to avoid contact. And by avoiding contact, they can move forward. So what is key here and what is based on the transcript is that you're able to identify the function that's needed and then you're able to identify the key factors that allow for that function to be done well. So you need to link this up um, with, uh, with the, your, your session plan. But ideally what your educator is looking for is, is that you're able to identify one or two, not too many, um, or three if you can, um, and identify those functions, identify the key factors, and are they a strength or a weakness? Because once you can do this strength and weakness, then you're talking about the next template, which is developing um, your team profile. Um, and then that's how you, you can lead on to developing your game plan. Are there any questions on this one? Tank, do you want to add anything here? Yeah, 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 Paul. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, just to summarize, uh, <coughs> remember in level one, you were, you were taken through identifying strengths and weaknesses using principles of play. And remember the order. You know, it is, it is in a sequence where you have gaining possession, then you go forward. Because there is no way that you can go forward if you don't get possession. So you were taught systematically how to identify those strengths and weaknesses using the principles of attack and principles of defense. Now at level two, you are now bringing and all those things and documenting them systematically. And it, this is a very, very important template because there is no way that you can coach effectively if you don't have this template and especially if you don't document this template. So this is very key because now this leads you to the first template, which is in uh, deriving your session plan. So coaches, please, this is a very important area. It takes time. If you have um, an application that does this, then that is okay. But if you don't have an application that does this through maybe a computer, then you had better have a team of, of guys who are going to do this for you. Because you cannot do mm -hmm. this and watch the game at the same time. So it's important you have a group of guys who are going to put this into writing. And then you as a coach, you can be able to go through this after the game. Thank you. That's all I wanted to add, Paul. Yeah, and look, guys. Uh, if you Paul, don't have a team of guys, we, we, Paul, can I ask? Yeah, sorry, who's that? Tosca. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I just want to go back to your, your presentation on uh, the coaches limiting themselves to two or th two very, very few key factors. The challenge that I'm, I'm having with, the, with our locals here is uh, people don't sort of are not aware of which key factors, if I'm doing catching and passing, which ones are very, very important. They end up overloading their, their, their session plan to the extent now that it sort of distracts them. They don't know exactly where to, what to look for when analyzing the players because they've got so many key factors that they have listed. So the question is, um, how will you help um, the coaches to select or to identify very, very important key factors in whatever skill that they are coaching. Thank you. Oscar, that's a brilliant question. Look, uh, Oscar, what is the goal of a pass? It has to go to the, to the receiver. As simple as that. It has to go to the receiver? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So how does a player get the ball to go to the receiver? By following key factors. But which ones? If as a player, as, as a player, let, let's take you, you've got a player on the field mm. and, and the player needs to pass the ball, isn't it? Some people have big hands, some people have small hands. Some people have long arms, some people have short arms. Is that correct? Some people have big biceps, some have yeah. small biceps. 
That's correct. How are we going to get all these different human beings with different body parts to pass well? Okay, so which three things, Oscar, would you say are, are the most important for you to get the pass to go to its target? If you just think um, about it. First thing I'll say, correct carry above your, above your waist. So for um, you, carrying the ball? Correctly. Two hands or one hand? Two hands. So carry the ball in two hands. And then punch, punch through and follow okay. through. Okay, let's see. What, what would punch through mean? Punch through. Let, let's, let's try and, and uh, because that's rugby jargon. I understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's say you're coaching seven, eight-year-olds who just started. So you'd say carry the ball in two hands and push. Just push, push, push your hands through. And so, so push on, the ball. Yeah, just push it. So carry in two hands, push the ball, and then what? And follow through. Now let's let's clean up follow through as well. So ball in two hands, push. And I'm just looking for a word. Basically, I would like to see the hands pointing to where the fingers pointing to where near the pass is going. Perfect, you've got it. Two yeah. hands, push, point. Yes. That's it. <laughs> How, how, my, my, my question, from, from the educator's point of view, yes. how, do you help, how do you help the coach uh, go through that? Just what you have just done with me. What I've done, just done with you? Yeah. Uh, so you're saying that when they look at all these sequential, these points of key factors, how do I get them to get these three like we've just done? just for the coaches to limit themselves to just a few few key factors so that they are able to analyze correctly. Okay. Um, the skill it, being it, performed. I understand. It comes to what Tank has just said. First, they've got to be practicing because when they practice is when they start developing their own style. Remember at, at the beginning of this, I said one of the outcomes is if you can start realizing your own style because we are all different as human beings, isn't it? So whatever it is we are getting, we must get it in our own style. So they've got to be practitioners first. Then the, the more they practice is you've got to ask them how they understand these key factors. You saw how I was talking to you just now. Yes. I was, I was getting into your world so that you can understand all those key factors from your perspective. Okay. So instead of listing those key factors for them in, in the language that it is like studying or cramming, why don't you get them to start going through those factors in their own understanding? Because the way I, I'd, I'd coach the past is not the way you'd coach the past. Yes, that's, that's yes. correct. And, yeah. and the same way it's your coaches are also human beings, they're individual human beings in their way. So there's that order that's listed. But once they can practice with that order, let them start developing their own style and their own feel on how they're comfortable with, with those key factors. Then you'll find that as they get better, they're going to narrow it and do it. But if they're not practicing uh, coaching using those key factors, then it's going to be very difficult for them to actually get key factors that are suitable to them. Well, can I add something on that to Oscar's question? Yes, Tony. Yeah, this is why I was emphasizing on the fact that preparation should not take place like one hour before you go into the pitch. You need to sit back the previous day or the previous night or whatever time you can create for yourself. And then World Rugby have also gotten, if you look at the, at the manuals, level one and level two, I believe, there are even pictorial examples of, of the key factors and how you can be able to coach and execute. So it all boils down to preparation. Please, gentlemen, don't give yourself one hour before you go into the pitch and then you're trying to do a session plan. Give it some time, prepare, refer, and then see what is most important for you to be able to affect that skill and get the right outcome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Oscar, did I go some way to answering your question? I think the, the, the most outstanding thing is um, get the coaches to 
do the key factors in their own language? Yeah, to practice first what Tank is talking about, practice yeah. it and then in, in their own language and then and then that way they can start developing their own style. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Oscar. So, thanks. Uh, thanks, Malik. I think the next one is the defense template, isn't it? Now, I've I've gone for I've gone to observe many coaches for their level two, and in three minutes, it's obvious that they have not been practicing their coaching using this template. For some, it's very obvious that they've been practicing it. For some, it's obvious that they've not. You can't pull it off on the day. You, or you can't pull it off three days before. Hey, educator is about to come. So let me start writing all these things down. No, because if you try and pull it off on that day, the players will not know what you're doing. Players will react in a very stiff manner to, to how you're coaching and you'll not be able to achieve the outcomes. Okay. Um, are there any questions on template two? Sorry. All right, Malik template three. So this is the one where we've got Robbie Deans. So your, your, your team profile, and your priority. And, and this, is, this has to be based on strengths and weaknesses, which are then based on your functional roles and, and, and uh, your key factors of that, which all come from the organization of your session. So your educator is going to look at if you've been able to actually develop a team profile to assess what, what you're doing well and what you're not doing well and, and relate it to this particular template. Um, so enhance your strengths and limit your weaknesses. So Malik, if you just go to the next page. What's the hardest bit for some of you coaches with this one? Is it a difficult one? Is it an easy one? Is it? Because it says what priority one needs the reason why you've ranked it. Remember, it's it's your session, it's your team. And how needs will be met at the practice session. Maybe can I can I can I comment, Paul? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think I think one of the biggest uh, weaknesses that us coaches have uh, regarding this template is uh, sometimes you tend to focus on what you like and what you are good at. And uh, that sometimes uh, 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 makes it, you know, like you, for, you, you, you override or you forget about a particular weakness because it is something that you don't like coaching or it is something that you have a problem with. And that is why in this template, it must be built from the second template where you have actually identified the strengths and the weaknesses. So priority number one up to priority number nine, what is expected is you're starting with your weaknesses as the priority. There would be no point of focusing so much on a strength when you have left out some particular weaknesses. So it's important that we don't fall into that trap uh, of coaching what you like most, irrespective of whether it is a strength or whether it is a weakness. That's why you have to have a priority such that priority one is the major weakness and you go systematically until priority nine will be the strength. So I think that is the importance of having this particular template here to help you have the priority needs in place from number one to number nine. Thanks. Th thanks, Tank. Um, now, so I just wanted to, to share stats that we're doing for the Gold Cup. Um, Malik, I think that's the last template. There is, there is 
is one more. What the last one is more or less uh, uh, is an administrative one. This is again. This, this is just number one to twenty-three and twenty. In fact, it's still old. Why does it love twenty-two? Um, and then um, twenty. If you just go through that one as a, as I get this these stats. Is it the game recording? Yeah. Hello? You want me to go through the game recording? Yeah, this game recording template. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. This actually, for, for, for the gentlemen, for the coaches who coach at a club level, especially Kenya and Eric Shirley, and I believe even up to nationwide, this is normally the game recording sheet that is filled and is left a copy is left at the union so it makes it very easy for the coach that all you need to do and this copy there's a copy that is not given to the club so it is very important uh, that that uh, you are able to tell that in this particular time you made a substitution and you made this substitution because this and also when you look at at the bottom there mm -hmm. you'll see notes for pre-game half time Post game. Now, I'll give you my own experience. Um, uh, I, I made a coaching diary when we, in the 2012, 2012 season, my last season when I was coaching there. And one thing that I find very satisfactory is that I can go back to that and know why I made a substitution in a game which we played in Tunisia in 2012 because it is on record see but you see when we don't record this and, and i can even tell from my coaching diary in 2012 who refed and why i felt that that ref was either a good ref or a poor ref so this game recording template which we sometimes take for granted first of all you have a copy at your club so just extracting what that copy and putting it into your coaching diary uh, should not be really a big deal. And then it also helps you to look at what are you going to tell the players before the game starts, what are you going to tell the players at halftime, and then what do you actually meant uh, post-game after that. So another very important template, and you don't have to be the one who is recording the whole of this template. It's there for you already. Filled. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, um, coaches, so just before we go now, can you see my screen? So, so this is from two years ago in, in the rugby qualifiers in the Gold Cup in Africa. So these are Kenya stats. Um, this is the rate of passing. This is the rate of carries. This is the rate of tackles, and this is the rate of rucks. Okay, uh, these are set pieces, line out scrums. Uh, if you come up here, made a total of 198 passes versus Morocco, and a total of 186 passes here. No, this is the total number of passes, sorry. Kenya made 108 passes. Zim made 104 passes. So here we made 108, 104. Simon, see you're, you're, you're the one who loves passing. Yes, I can see the stats there. So if you're looking at this as a coach, yeah. what did you say about our passing? Um, I can see it's at 54%. So I think That's the guys need possession. to... Uh, possession. If you look, uh, the, let's come down here, yeah? Yeah. Look at the total number of passes and then look at, there's one pass every 10 seconds Yeah. against Morocco and one pass every 10 seconds against Zimbabwe. Yeah, so uh, from that, I think I can say that uh, the game plan is more of uh, uh, shifting the ball. So you think if, we, we play a lot more with the ball in hand? Yeah, I think we play more with... Uh, yeah, with the ball ball in hand than kicking. I can't see the kicking stats. 
Okay, no, no. Let's just stick to the passing because we're yeah. looking at is a pass every 10 seconds, 54% of possession. So yeah. is that an area of strength or weakness for us? Um, I think that's an area of strength. So but it, dep it depends how you look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it depends now, how you look at it. Th that's, that's a very valid point you have. Yeah. Are you able, and coaches, you can help Simon, is he able to actually make a team profile just by looking at that data? Yes, um, on my opinion, yes, I can. To an extent, because you, you had a but, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because what else would you need? Maybe you'd need to be there yourself to have a feel of the game. Yes? Yeah, yes, very true. Your experience, yeah. your intuition. Yeah. And how you know the players. So, so that, that's the point I, I wanted uh, to make. Um, your experience, your intuition, your gut feeling are very important. As most of you coaches, some of you are coaching second division in Kenya, that's called nationwide um, a championship. I think that's called championship. Then there's nationwide. Um, and then there's the top Kenya cup one. At times you are, you are alone and, and, uh, and uh, you have your gut feeling and your intuition. Now you need to use the data to back up what your gut feeling and intuition do. These templates here for the level two are to help you begin to have some form of science behind what your experience and your intuition and your gut feeling tells you as a coach. And that's all the diary is about. The diary is for you to start developing a backup for what you're seeing, what, what you're feeling. As you said, Tank has just told you, he can then go back into his backup and it gives him an idea of why he made a substitution, why he removed someone, why he did not. And that's really what all these templates are about. Why have you decided on this game plan? The team profile will help you. The team profile also is backed up by the strengths and the weaknesses. The strengths and the weaknesses are backed up by functional roles, key factors, which are backed up by your session plan. Okay, so, so that's the loop. And then when you get here, you can then review this loop through the same process. Um, because you may find, oops, actually, what I thought is inaccurate based on what I've come up with, or actually what I thought is true. This is the strength of our team, or this is uh, what's going on with this particular player. That's it from me, Tank. Any of you? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, great, great, great uh, presentation there. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, maybe we can just take some questions if you feel maybe there's an area that is still uh, is still a problem. But like, take note of what I said from the beginning. This is not a punitive exercise. This is not an exercise to come and laugh at your mistakes. This is an exercise to come and document those good ideas that you have as a coach so that you can be able to have a record of what you are doing and it will make your work much, much easier. So for me, once you've gone through the face-to-face -face in level two, I believe sincerely 70% of your problems are over. For me, the coaching diary is just something now to document and help you now achieve, and not just a matter of getting the level two certificate. It is also to assist you in your coaching. So ladies and gentlemen, we can take a few questions if you, um, that we still need to cover. I can see a comment from Doreen. Okay, that's a good comment. Most of my questions at the beginning are getting answered as we go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, I have one. Okay, Malik has a... Malik, you want to you share a template that's been filled? Okay. Yeah, one I used uh, last year. So if guys need to look at it, I can share. Just to go through and maybe you can correct me or give me any comment. So should I share? 
or it's okay with everyone? Yes, please I'm share. Is, okay. is that Edgar? Yes, it's Edgar. Guy, you've just been quiet in the corner here. <laughs> yeah, I've been quiet, but it's okay. Yes, he can share. <laughs> Oh, he can email me. <laughs> what did he say? Uh, this one, I believe, Polo, you were there. Polo Dera, you were there watching the game. And uh, this is what I used after the game. Uh, I took my yes, 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 yes. The, um, yeah. yeah, the one at Strathmore. Yes. So everyone can see it, yeah? So this is where I started off. Game analysis template, attacking. Ah, I can't move it down. As you can see, just fill in. Then uh, at the end, this is for attack. Then going down. You just do your strengths, weaknesses, and uh, as we said, you, you work on the weaknesses more when you're training. On defense, I could see where we went wrong, where our strength was, and uh, as you can see, our strength was uh, better than our weaknesses, which are few. So going down to the other template is where the team profile is. As Tank said, your priority. So just to sort out the weaknesses. Malik. Yes. Give me give me give me an example. Go back, go back up. So I'm I'm coming I'm coming to observe you on Tuesday or Monday. Yes. yes. Pick for me an area here. Should should I go first to where I, I'm planning for the week, the coming week no, after no, no. doing no. the whole thing. I just want us to go, I just pick pick an area for me here. Okay. It could be a strength, it could be a weakness. Just pick an area under which, under one principle or whatever. Okay, I, I, I can go to the tackling, to preventing territorial gain quality tackling. I can go so, to the weakness, tackling technique. So tackling technique is the weakness and that is yes. the area you want to you want to identify, okay? Yes. So let's go to your session plan. Mm -hmm. So we, the principle is prevent territory being gained. First it's under defense. Okay? Yes. So then it's prevent territory being gained, tackling technique. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let's get, do you have a session plan here somewhere? No, but uh, I, I, I did not okay, what good. I'm going to do about the tackling technique. Okay, End of so. So Malik has identified tackling technique. That's an area he wants to, to go and work on. Now, what is preventing your team from tackling properly? The first one was body position. So body position of the tackler. Yes, of the tackler. So if you look at the key factors, um, key factors, so let's, since people are, Let's just take it through slowly. So this is the area we've identified as a principle. This would be under our, our template uh, on, uh, this was game analysis. Yeah. Okay. So then now we want to work key factors, functional role, functional role of the tackler. Yes. Prevent territory being gained or stop territory going up. Um, so, what are the key factors? Um, you don't have to remember them all of it. Right body position. Right, looking up. Through. Yeah, wrap, you know, arms. Wrap your angle. hands, then drive with your feet. Head in, head in the right place, etc. Yes? Yeah. Yes. So when your players have been missing their tackles, mm -hmm. and I can see something negative tackles, it's because of their body position, is it their arms? Is it it's head in the wrong their place? Body position. So they're too high. Yeah. Does tackle height always lead to a missed tackle? 
No, but uh, the guys will yeah. beat the game line. Yes. So, you know, the, the game, the game I watched when, when you played uh, South Coast Pirates. Yes. Your guys were much bigger, a lot better conditioned, and more powerful. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to go low. <laughs> In fact, you bullied you bullied those poor fellows from the coast. Okay, I'm coming from a point of view of safety. Yeah, now, now we're now you you're, you're doing well, Malik. Well done, because now you're talking tackle height is now into um, whether it's safe or not safe. It's safer. Okay. When you go low, and yeah, and safe safe technique is also quite effective. But um, where I'm going to now is perhaps missed tackles can have other key factors to it. So you see, Malik is dealing very well with what he sees, what he knows, and he knows his team well. Um, if we add the other key factors, could wrapping the arms around be something there that makes them miss tackles? Could, could their yes. foot movement be also an, a, a key factor where they are not moving into, you have to get close to a defender, to an attacker, isn't it? Yes. So maybe moving the feet. Uh, aligning the attacker. Exactly, aligning the attacker. So you see, coaches, as I'm talking Malik through, we are now looking at different key factors and we are, we are trying one and maybe it's not it. So maybe it could be moving their feet. Yes, and then Malik is thinking about it. Yeah, that will work. Okay, yes, they're not moving their feet um, enough. So we, we, they're not moving their feet quickly enough to get close to an attacker. Okay, or they're committing too early. Yes, mm -hmm. so maybe they need to drop late, okay, before they get there. So Malik, thank you very much. That, that, that is a very valid point there, um, just on that particular key factor. Edgar, has that helped you? Because you, you are really keen on, on seeing this. Yes, it has, <laughs> thank you very much, it has. Okay, so what, what helped, what's, what, what has, how has it helped you? Uh, actually, I've, um, like I've understood from the way you guys have communicated, like how you align yourself to how the defender, the tackler aligns him or herself to the attacker. Yeah. And also how you move, let's say, like the boxer's feet. You can't be yeah. just flat, flat footed. I think it's called boxer's feet. You have to be, in, do in that motion and yeah. also the positioning if uh, when you go a bit high you'll give a lot of penalty that is the tackle if you are a bit high you can give a lot of penalties because you go if you're high you'll go you'll tackle high let's say you tackle above the waist which is which will award the uh, attacking players a penalty so you have to mm -hmm. go a bit low also that is for player safety both the attacker and the defender. So even if you're a defender, if you go low, you it's also safer to you. Yeah. Um, and so you, you've brought in quite a number of key factors there. Excuse me, please. And um, what, what's important is to try and uh, narrow them down and, and make them as few as possible. Okay. So um uh which is a which is a, a very good way of of looking at how to coach so thank you edgar simon you have another question there i can see a question yeah paul in fact i had i had seen it eh? seen so let me just question. respond to that eh? I, I think what 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 simon has brought there is a very important point um uh, in terms of having the priorities does not mean that you leave out the strengths I think the idea is to focus more on the weaknesses, but you must also build on the strengths. So it's not that you're not going to coach the strong areas. You must also build on that strength and make it better. But that template is just saying the order of what priorities are you going to take first. Yeah. Simon. Have I answered your question, Simon? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Simon, Simon, yes. you, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. This is from the Junior World Trophy uh, last year yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, mm -hmm. 
Kenya at the bottom. Yeah. Correct? The yeah. Japan are right at the top. One every six seconds of possession. Yeah. Um, these are the passes they made, 139, 186. Kenya mm -hmm. are here. One every 10 seconds of possession. Yeah. 60 and 109. So can we say this is a weakness? Yes. Definitely. Because the best team in the tournament are up here. Now, yeah, let's true. come down to rucks. Where are Kenya? Uh, second. Second. Second only yeah. to the, the eventual champions. Yeah. As we know, guys, eh? <laughs> smashing things, eh? Stool. Yeah, true. Mm. Eh? Kanka. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Whatever names guys use. So, Simon, your yeah. question is valid. Do we yeah. as Kenya forget about this story here and then come up here and say, look, we want to pass like Japan and, and get these, you see these passing movements? Uh -huh. yeah, one we only had 1%, yes. when we had the ball, only 1% mm -hmm. of the time did you have four plus passes. Yeah. Yeah. 65% of the time we on one pass. Yeah. Which, so what do we do? Do we reduce this, which is a strength for us, mm -hmm. Mm. and focus on this? Or mm. do we focus on this and just forget about this story? Coaches, yeah. Um, on my, on my perspective. Hold, hold on. Just wait. France, Francis Ndonga, you're here. Yes, I am. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Actually, there's a question I was also asking, and I think it ties into what you've just asked, right? So you look at the, pass, the uh, successful pass, uh, passing percentage uh, relative to the other teams. And then you look at... So for me, what that means is that um, at best, or we could get one pass and then into contact. So does that mean that the players are not confident enough in their skills when it comes to catch and pass? Or is it that when we did play, the other teams were extremely good at rushing us in defense, forcing us to go back into contact? Francois. Yeah. Francois, I've come to you as my consultant, not, not for you to give me more questions. Now I'm <laughs> asking you, Francois. Okay, tell Francois, me. do yes. I... Do I focus? Remember, Simon has asked a very good question. Do we focus here so that we get up to where Japan, Brazil are, so that we can get to this percentage where we have three plus four plus passes? And right. then these racks of ours here, we, we ignore. Or mm -hmm. do we say, look, this is an area of strength. We continue smashing human beings uh, at the breakdown. And this we leave. I think there needs to be a, a bit of a balance, right? Which we balance would you take? That you can um, push up the passing percentage, right? Maybe go from the bottom of the table to maybe around where Portugal or Uruguay are. While that means we ignore this in, one? No, while still maintaining what you already have. Because if this strength already exists, then you can still, the amount of effort you have to put into it at training can be reduced slightly to put in a bit more effort into the passing. Because if, Interesting. Yeah, because if you look at the final sum of it, how many tries or how many line breaks did we get from the racking and the smashing as opposed to how many we could get if we could get everyone comfortable with passing. And then Francois, also racking and smashing Francois, is tiring. Yes. Francois. Yes, you're sir. my consultant and you're still giving me more questions than answers. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm building extra because i think like every situation has no no, no. francis outcomes. you're doing well yeah. you're doing well because you you keep asking questions Olise, say yeah. oliver mangin what yes, would you tell these, these young people you've come from simbas and they're looking at their there's guru second row what do we do do we leave this uh, okay for me i think uh when we're talking when we're talking about passing and our and we can't do at, at four passes uh, at any particular time, uh, for every, we only have one percent, one percent for four plus. 
and it means we are lacking at that area. And when uh, we are going into the session, of however much you are going to measure on that, we need not to forget our strength. We will work more. We'll, we'll divide the time, of course. Work more to improve our passing, especially under pressure. Then, not forgetting, uh, if we have people who can, who can run at people and uh, gain gain meters for us we'll keep doing that but we'll put emphasis because when you raise this passing rate even the contact will will go down slightly to our advantage because we'll have our ball out wide and we'll if that is the game plan we're gonna use yeah. we'll be we'll be having the ball moving so much for us to even get points thanks Oli. Oliver yeah well spoken look and that's a good thing about rugby. What I would do, I would say every time we have the ball, we are only making two passes and then we engage. That's what I'd do. Because one is an area of strength and the other is an area of strength. Two passes, hit. Two passes, hit. Two passes, hit. Because we make sure that our two passes must be accurate. And I know we're already strong in the breakdown. So that would be me, anyway. <laughs> okay. Ah, Twinji, I think we're about to go there and I got excited. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> I, I realized and the coaches are also getting excited. Hey, guys, we need to wind up. Eh? <laughs> oh, we need to wind up. So is there any other comment or any other pressing issue? Remember, you can also talk to us on individual levels. Eh? We don't have to wait uh, uh, for this... Uh, you know, for these uh, uh, presentations. You can always get in touch with us individually and we discuss more and more. So is there anything pressing? Because I feel it's, uh, it's time for us to wind up. And yes, Kim, I, I just forgot, Kim brought a very interesting point on SNC thoracic mobility yes. and SNC perspective. Kim, that is excellent indeed. Um, I didn't even want to go into SNC uh, here. Uh, because that's a whole different world which would be so relevant to a lot of what we're discussing. In fact, Kim talked about integrated conditioning in his presentation on Monday. A lot of this would work. Anyway, uh, I think, can I, can I add something, please? Edgar, very here. Please speak a bit louder, Ed Edgar. Yes, I'm saying, can I add something, please? Yes, yes, please do. Uh, I also think, um, I think that's what even Kim, uh, Coach Kim is trying to put, and also Coach Paul uh, uh, trying to put. I think it's also high time for us as coaches from both sides, from Kenya Cup to uh, ESAS champion, uh, Championship and Nationwide. I think it's best if we have a certain type of, type of play for all of our teams, like what have, as Coach Paul has put, like let's have, uh, we have like two passes, then engage the, the two passes to be accurate. You know, like for example, um, news, uh, South Africa usually like to have a kicking game and scrum plays mostly uh, the engaging game. New Zealand uh, usually like to have the running games. So here in Kenya, we also need to have a particular type of play so that it should be easier for teams, uh, for players when they're engaged in the 15th or 7th setup to come in and just to incorporate in. It's, it will be easier. Uh, as in yeah. that's, we and should yeah. just have, yes, sir. Very valid point. Very valid point. And if you look at that stat, is that how we play our game at Kenya Cup? Two, one, two passes, engage. One, two passes, engage. Isn't it? Yes, but no, I can say not, not on all. Let's say, for example, okay, for, I can say for, like, let's say, like, our team in Mwamba, we used to play Kitambo even if we, we have uh, a chance to get the three points on any, we'll just say Guara, Guara, but now we've come to that situation where we have the points or let's take the two passes engaged, then we look, what should we do? Should the forwards 
continue carrying or should we let the backs play? You see, but I've seen to other teams as we've not reached to, let's say, is it maturity or what, to that play where we know this is Kenya. Let's say we're playing against Ugandan club or the Ugandan national team. This is Kenya. They'll do this. They'll grind, they'll grind or they'll run the ball. Like, let's say like we know when New Zealand have the ball or you know, they'll just grind like, let's say like twice. Then backs because they like running the game. If it's SA, they'll grind, grind. If they see they don't get the advantage, they'll yeah. kick. Then they get the line out. Then they grind again. And, you and, see. And I hear you. Yeah. And, yes. and what I'm trying to drive all of you coaches at is I am becoming, I, in fact, I'm now a new student of Kenya Cup because I must study Kenya Cup for me to realize where I'm going to get my players from. And that's what I'm saying. To me, that's Kenya Cup when I watch it. Uh, two passes, three maximum, and it's into contact. So if those are the players I'm going to get, should I then devise a game plan that sharpens those skills and make sure we are so effective in doing that that nobody can stop us? So, you know, that, that's my perspective. So as Francois is asking, dog is saying, okay, is that a sign of weakness? So it, our weakness can be our strength. You know, even if we're playing England or South Africa, whatever it is, they can't stop it. They know it's coming, but they can't stop it. So that could be one way of, of looking at it. And that's why I'm asking all of you to be students. Be a student of Nationwide. Be a student of the championship so that you understand, okay, so this is the game. This is how it's played. These are the conditions that we play under. Um, and, and this is how we, we, we can prepare and work. So anyway, today I think we can talk. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, I would, I would I would like us to get back to the diary. Yeah? You know, you know, uh -huh. we can we can stay up to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want us to get back to the diary, so oh, that right. I want to be comfortable that we have. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I want to live comfortably um, knowing that that we have completely demystified that issue of the diary. So. Is there anything that you feel maybe you still want to contribute in terms of the diary? Because I would like us to end the session. Uh, Tank, it's about the... Yes. Uh, as, as, yep. as related to this particular uh, example, Polota, yes. uh, of, of, the, of the maximum of two passes, the maximum of two passes um, and two passes... Uh, Maybe the, the the key factor. Thing. You remember I went through the key thing, uh, with the one. Yes. Uh, I think I think I think the the fact that whoever ha has the ball, uh, whether in the Netherlands or in the Kenya Cup, any of our competitions, whoever has the ball has a tendency of making steps forward. And killing and killing the the space ball can not even the defend so you keep preventing from 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 making pass uh, uh, um, actually the the too many steps forwards with the ball and we kill our own space. Can't hear, Papa. Papa, you seem to be breaking, eh? Oh, can you hear me? We can hear you, but you're breaking. Uh, I mean, I'm in sharks now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is, yeah. is uh, uh, the, the, it's preventing us from doing two passes, or, uh, the four passes that the Japanese guys are doing, is whoever has in yeah. Uh, whether it's in the nationwide in Kenya or the championship, uh, to run forward with the never get to run forward and kill our own space. The key of the the, the, the uh, shift the ball across the those are the, I think that's the key that prevents us from doing more than two passes per per per, per episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution, Papa. Guys, again, uh, 
I believe uh, we need to come to the end of the session because now it's 8.31. So we've done a cool one and a half hours. Uh, maybe I should hand over to Malik and then Malik can conclude the session for us. Malik, are you on? Yes, I'm on, Tank. Yeah, Thank the you. floor is yours now. Thank you, Dr. Tank. Thank you, Paul Lodera. Thank you, everyone else who joined in and uh, those guys watching via Facebook Live. Uh, it was a good session. Uh, I believe everyone here has enjoyed, has understood what we were trying to convey. And I hope uh, now we can at least get more level two coaches in the country because uh, we know how it goes now. So, so Santeni, Mike Kwambo, anything you need to add? Yeah, thank you, Malik. Um, just to appreciate our colleagues watching from Botswana, Z, Tosca, and Doreen. Z is the coach, educator, and union development manager. Tosca is the coach, trainer, and union training manager. And Doreen Ketchabile is a level two coaching candidate. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much. Bye bye, and we we'll see you next yeah. time. Thanks for putting this together, Ali. <laughs> yes, bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Malik. Thank you. Thank you.